So we are asking the question with our own patients, does the thumb size matter? And how well can the MRI be a, uh, what's the predictive value of preoperative MRI in the prediction of an ACL tear type? So using a common classification system, um, type one through five, we looked at type one, which was a proximal avulsion, type two, proximal tear involving the, the proximal 25%, type three is a mid-substance tear, type four, distal third tear, and type five, distal avulsion. We went back um, through all of our bare surgery since 2020, and these were blinded, the MRIs were blinded, and then we looked at our intraoperative records to see um, what the tear type would be classified at a time of arthroscopy. And uh, the two surgeons in the study were myself and Dr. McMillan from Virtual Health. Um, again, these were all patients, um, consecutive series from 2020 to 2023. And looking at my results, I had 34 patients uh, that were included in the study. Um, the majority were ski injuries and, uh, and the others either non-sport or soccer is also a common mechanism. Average age was 31 um, in, in this cohort. And interestingly, we found that MRI predicted the ACL tear type in only 56% of patients. Most patients on the, on the table on the right, you can see it. Most patients on MRI had a type 2 classification, so involving that, you know, not a proximal volume, but the, uh, the upper 25%. Um, compared to the arthroscopic findings showed that the majority were actually more of an evolution type involving, you know, the... the uh, as an evolution as opposed, as opposed to the top 25%. Um, in over 90% of these inaccurate predictions, at the time of arthroscopy, the tear type was determined to be more proximal and even more amenable to repair than I predicted on the preoperative MRI. So very similar to Dr. Anthony, we went back and looked at our first 35 patients. Again, very similar demographics between males and females. Our average age was a little bit younger, 24 uh, years of age was on average there. And again, a myriad of uh, mechanisms of injuries, in, including various sports and competitive sports. And again, looking at these, um, we were able to sort of isolate again in our hands, only 57% of the time were we able to accurately predict the tear size based upon the MRI compared to what we got inside the joint interoperatively. And again, when we were inaccurate by about 90%, we were off by about one tear size. So it, it, it's significant. And that sort of goes to the fact that MRIs are static injuries uh, and images rather. And the tear oftentimes is sort of balled up or scarred in. And once we get into the knee joint, there's things that we can do to sort of elongate that ACL that the MRI sort of hides from us.